So the uh, Airbus uh, system engineering team is uh, playing a significant role in bringing the requirements we receive from the customer into a design and bring that design into hardware, into the real product and then finally uh, verify and qualify that product and deliver it to the customer. Challenges, uh, main requirements on a system level, uh, we had to take care that uh, the interfaces into the uh, entire spacecraft, we fit directly into that spacecraft because we are part of a big, big system. On top of this, main challenges uh, on system level are the budgets, thermal, uh, power and mass budgets, but of course a significant role is playing safety. We built a human-rated system and here we had to take care in the design phase significantly of the safety aspects uh, of, that, uh, of that entire vehicle. If we look into a subsystem by subsystem, each and, su each and every subsystem has own challenges like our structure team. Uh, structure team had to take care that the uh, significant loads the launch is putting on that spacecraft are really observed by the uh, European service module. Um, if we look further, the thermal team uh, um, had to take care of the extreme cold and extreme hot cases and had to make sure um, that the entire ESM is in a warm well condition. On consumable side, we had to deliver or we have to deliver water, oxygen, nitrogen and all these need to be carried in a right manner. On top of this, we have the power and avionics. Uh, and here, especially on the power side, we had to generate sufficient enough power for the entire vehicle. And on the other side, we had to consume on our, our side very low uh, power and energy. On top of this, uh, we have the propulsion subsystem. And in the propulsion team, it's important that uh, the 33 thrusters, different kind, different size, are fed by the same propulsion subsystem, by the same propellant feed system. And that was really a challenge for the team. Um, so that's basically, uh, in a quick summary, uh, our main challenges we had in terms of the requirements. The interaction with the customer, ESA, NASA and Lockheed um, is very, very intense. So from the beginning we had to take care of the customer requirements and here especially ESA was giving us the requirements but, but of course they were coming finally from NASA and from Lockheed because Lockheed is the prime contractor for the entire spacecraft. So from the beginning, the requirements translation into the design, uh, we were very close together. And here, also in the design phase, we had even persons on site. We were several times on site at Lockheed Martin to really link the topics, uh, link the design together, crew module, crew module adapter, and then uh, the European service module. Important role here played our interfaces, interface definitions. We worked very close together with Lockheed. Uh, and with NASA ESA on that one to make sure that at the end everything fits from electrical, from mechanical, uh, from the fluidic perspective so that the entire spacecraft is really fit together. Teamwork plays a significant role in that. Uh, so if we would not work in Europe with our subcontractors as the European team and that jointly with our end customer, uh, ESA, NASA and Lockheed, it would not work. So it was a very collaborative approach we took uh, because of the short duration, short duration in terms of the design phase, it was necessary to work very close together. It's more than a job, it's a passion. I was growing up in the eastern part of Germany. Um, I was growing up with the first German cosmonaut Sigmund Jähn. He flew to a uh, Russian space station uh, in the late 70s and uh, as a child I got passionized by that flight and now uh, we do even something bigger. We bring humans back to the moon and I'm responsible for the technical implementation of the European service module here at Airbus. And I can tell you, I'm very proud of it to be part of that entire journey uh, back to the moon.